one of my favorite places in the world. In my own backyard. I'm a lucky, lucky lady. So it's been an exceptionally busy few weeks. Like even for me, <laughs> the level of craze, even for Esther. Um, so I'm here and it's the 10th of July and I'm finally like recording a video about my July cards and actually my July cards, my wheel of life cards, super, super interesting, important, valuable. You know, the, in June I was, my card of the month was the devil uh, in the Astara Tarot. So, you know, just really grappling with the sense of unfreedom and habitual patterns and, you know, how do we, like, as I've been saying in a bunch of contexts lately, you know, the devil, the tarot devil, is not a, not a bad figure at all. Um, it's just the figure of, like, how life rolls along. One link in the chain connected to the next. It's, it's the pattern energy of, um, of our human, finite, created selves. It's the pattern energy of, of what Buddhists call karma, you know, where we just kind of keep, uh, keep doing what we're doing. And so the question is, how do we break free? How do we, how do we actually mm, come to life, you know, real full life? And um, my July card kind of gives the answer to that. So my July card is the Six of Pentacles. And, you know, this month started with, sorry, airplane. This month started with the final day of uh, my in-person retreat, my Just Enough Woo retreat. By the way, next summer, I'm going to do that in-person retreat in the same beautiful venue. But while I've kind of been doing it as a retreat that you could come to even if you didn't like tarot, next year's full-on uh, three days, four days, three nights, um, mindful tarot. Yeah, bam. Uh, Marcola, Oregon, beautiful venue, TP Village Retreat. I uh, haven't set the dates yet, but uh, kind of keep in mind, probably be in July uh, next next summer. Okay, 2025. So here's the thing, you know, um, the last day of the retreat was the end of June, and the retreat itself had really been a Six of Pentacles experience, you know? I often think of this card as like really shadowy. Um, I'll drop in the image here of the um, Rider Waite Smith version of this card, which I always think of as like noblesse oblige, you know, here we are, we're the noble person, we've got the, we've got the pocketbook, we've got the goods, we've got the resources, so let those resources flow down to those below. And then that balance, like, you know, that sense that some will be given, some will not be given, uh, some are worthy, some are not. And so just that awareness of what is really, I think, the shadow side of generosity, which is generosity that keeps track <laughs> of what has been taken in, what has been given out. But, you know, the six, sixes are the cards of harmony and grace. You know, the six is the lover's card, the sixth trump. It's also the tower, which is 16, you know. But there's a sense in sixes in tarot that heaven is meeting earth, that there is a balance of giving and receiving, of above and below, of in and out, of breathing, breathing in, breathing out of life and death. And the Six of Pentacles, man, giving and receiving, that's the balance. The balance is the complete abundant generosity of the universe. And at the end of my retreat, what had really been highlighted to me was the way in which community, the kinds of community that I'm always drawn to, these communities that are like teaching, learning communities, that's their six of pentacles, you know, I mean, I'm putting, I'm putting content out there, but you guys are showing up. Um, and thus it flows. And that in my own growth as a teacher, you know, 
Um, some of you know that uh, uh, alongside the f 15 of the devil, the, that five of the hierophant, that teacher role, that, you know, authority role, that's a archetype I inhabit all the fucking time. And the six of pentacles is reminding me of the freedom um, of the way teaching and learning are like two beats of the same heart. Uh, just how much I'm receiving, just how important my vulnerability is going to be in this whole whole process, this whole spiritual bloody blah 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 process. <laughs> okay, so um, this is my month card, and what I've just been talking about now is in the terms of mindful tarot, uh, that rim month reading where I look at the card on the wheel just before this month's card and then this month. So that relationship between devil, my June card, and six of pentacles, my July card. But also important to think about is what I call hub month. Sorry, it's awfully noisy in Estes neighborhood. My hub card, as we'll all remember, because I've been talking about this Coachella guy for a long time, Burning Man, you burners out there let me know if you see it if you see the emperor um yeah so this is my hub card for the year 2024 and this relationship right i mean i think i've been talking about it implicitly like the way in which you know the way in which whatever the emperor wants to do of building worlds of creating that fourfold uh, symmetry and structure and stability that that requires the breathing in breathing out of generosity so that relationship between fours and sixes in tarot between the emperor and the six of pentacles and may i just say um i've come to love molly applejohn's suit of pentacles in the astara tarot it's the most goddamn watery <laughs> earth suit that i've ever seen and just for me earth is like my least dominant element you know, earth body. I'm like in my mind, I'm in my like watery heart, relational, spiritual, poetic, blah, blah, blah. And I'm fire. Like, I'm like, fuck you world. I'm going to meet you where you are. Right. Earth, not so much sometimes. And uh, Molly Applejohn reminds me of the deep, deep, deep relationship between the waters of the unconscious of the psyche and the embodied givenness of the earth suit. Okay. Uh, last thing, spoke month. Okay. So in the kind of triumvirate of wheel of life, monthly readings in mindful tarot, I look at, uh, the previous month's card and this month card, I look at the hub card and this month cards. And I then also look across the wheel, like along the line of the spokes. And so in this sense, it's going to be thinking about January and July. And my January card was the sun, which has become an incredibly important card for me and kind of almost like a hub card because like the way that this archetype just like dove into my life, uh, being in Oaxaca. And I've been thinking about, there's a Jungian archetype that has been written about lately called, um, and I have this book on order, I need to get it, called Kore, like the maiden, the maiden uh, archetype, like Artemis or Athena. <coughs> Sorry, that <coughs> whew, pollen, that warrior, um, not maiden like Persephone, not like virginal maiden on the brink of, uh, you know, coming into the fruition of sexuality, but more like that virgin warrior, Joan of Arc, kind of archetype, that Joan of archetype. And this sun card with its female figure, this is Kore energy to the max. Um, so that was my January card. This is my July card. So they are across the wheel from each other. Now, as we come into the second half of the, the year, the second half of the wheel of life, we're repeating those spoke month cards. This is a question that came up uh, in the Mindful Tarot community. Like, well, what do you do when you, you know, when you come into the second half and you're repeating the pairings that you've already talked about? This is where everything that I've said in the past about calibration is important. 
okay? There is a directionality in calibration. By saying that, I mean that there's a, a, a source card and a target card, okay? Like, there's the, it's just like in, in um, uh, those are terms that come out of the study of metaphor, but just like in a metaphor where, where, I, where I might say, my love is a red, red rose, the source image is actually the second noun mentioned, the rose. I know something about roses, that's my source. I'm trying to understand more about love, that's my target. So when we calibrate with two cards or two decks, there's a card that is our anchor that we, that we know something more about, or that is like kind of, like I'm thinking here of a compass. Oh, maybe I'll drop an image of a compass where, you know, the, the point that's uh, planted firmly and then the, the free arm that wheels around. So there's a point that's planted firmly. And when I'm doing the spoke month reading, right? Or any of these two card wheel of life readings, the target is always the card of the month right? I'm trying to understand more about how this card applies to me. So when I'm reading it alongside, uh, whoop, 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 when I'm reading it alongside the emperor, I'm saying, okay, I want to understand this. This is my uh, source. This is my target. When I'm reading it alongside uh, in a rim month reading, last month's card, this is my source. This is my target. This is what I'm trying to understand. So that is the same thing with the spoke month. As I'm thinking about how these two cards connect, this is my source, this is, I'm sorry, this is my target, this is my source, which is different than saying when I was in January trying to talk about my January card. Does that make sense? So the, how we read has a kind of directionality with two card readings. Not always, but in this, calibrating context it does so all right how does the sun inform the six of pentacles and so what i'm thinking about here is the ferocity of the sun card that brilliance of the sun card the way in which there's a fearless fearsome energy to this generosity the phrase for this that resonates to me is the concept of radical generosity so this isn't just like oh we give and we take, we give and we receive. This is like, I'm gonna give everything and receive as fully as an empty vessel can receive, which is to say, fill me up, empty me out, fill me up. So the radical generosity of teaching, let's say, of the way I develop content of the way I put my voice out into the world. That's what I'm going to be exploring this month. The radical, sun-drenched, fierce, core energy of giving. That's what my spoke month card or spoke month reading is offering up for me right now. Okay. I don't know. Hope that made sense. Hope that enlivened uh, I'm going to make a few videos this morning because I have time for the first time in several weeks. Um, but here you go. Thank you all. As always, thank you so much for your practice.